Hello, dudes and dudettes. I'm stuck at home because all the shooting ranges are closed. This is Tonto, everybody. Hello, Mr. Tonto. Tonto, Tonto, come. Damn it. Well, anyways, um, so uh, Susan has asked me a question on Facebook and I've been answering her questions this way and I said, you know what, why don't I just make a video for you guys? Because if I can't get out there to teach classes in person with you all on the range, um, I can invite you over to my house and we'll do classes here on the kitchen table. I can go to your home and do classes around the kitchen table. Or honestly, I could just film this and then uh, get it all out there to you at your own leisure and convenience. So right now it is March, what is it, 19, 20, 20. Uh, a lot of people um, are concerned about um, potential violence and chaos and disorder because of the whole coronavirus scare. Um, a lot of people are going out to buy their first firearm and particularly a lot of Chinese immigrants, uh, Asian uh, immigrants are concerned about uh, arming themselves to be able to protect themselves against uh, xenophobia and racially uh, motivated uh, prejudice or violence. So I've got a lot of people coming to me about questions. Uh, a lot of people that are very anxious to purchase a firearm and then they're kind of uh, overwhelmed by the sheer amount of information that they need. It sounds very simple to go get a gun, but actually it's not quite as simple as you think. All right, so before we go any farther, my name is Brian Wang. Uh, my business is called Monarch Defense. Um, I'm primarily based in the Bay Area now, although I do technically travel the country to teach firearm safety classes, uh, intermediate level um, kind of skills with the firearm and advanced level gunfighting um, and pretty, pretty high intensity uh, martial application of using the gun as a fighting tool. So. If you're interested in learning more about that, you can check us out at monarchdefense.org, Instagram, Monarch Defense, Facebook, YouTube. Um, my YouTube is fairly primitive. Um, I'm no master at making videos, so just bear with me. I'm gonna try and give you guys a very, very, very thorough discussion today on what is a shotgun, why do you have it, uh, why might you buy a shotgun? How do you use it for self-defense? What kind of ammunition do you choose? How do you purchase it? Uh, how do you purchase it? Uh, the legalities of purchasing it? Uh, what kind of ammunition do you need um, that's best for you? Um, what gauge you should buy? What can you expect out of the performance of it? Um, and just in general, like a broad overview of all the nuts and bolts of using a shotgun for self-defense. Everything except for the actual hands-on training, which we would have to do in person, of course. But <clears throat> So uh, I have for you guys a couple of shotguns. This is a Remington 1100, it is in 12 gauge. It is a semi-automatic shotgun with a, um, I don't know, 18 and a half inch barrel. So I have another Remington here. This one is an 870, Remington 870 in 12 gauge. This is a manually operated shotgun, a slide action or pump action shotgun. Um, and they're very similar. And I have this one here, which is also a Remington 870, but this one is in 20 gauge. And we'll talk about the differences between 20 gauge and 12 gauge. Now this is a youth model, so we'll talk about the size of the gun um, when we talk when we get down later in this list of things. Now you notice these three guns that I have for you, they're all Remingtons. Remington is an American brand. They are very common in this country, United States. You don't need to buy a Remington. There's many um, good guns out there. Um, namely Mossberg is the other major player in the economical mass production, uh, kind of low cost shotgun market. Um, but there's also, you know, Fabrique Nationale, there's uh, Franchi, there's um, a Beretta, there's Benelli. Um, so, uh, and there, there's there's a couple other there's a couple Turkish manufacturers. There's some some guns out there that that you know you can shop for. I'm simply giving you what I have here, which is you know very common, very easy to use. Um, they're not the best by any means, but we talk about the the differences in ergonomics. <clears throat> so, um, let's see. Shotguns for self defense. An introduction, a broad introduction. Okay. Um, why get a gun? Well, uh, if you have a fire in your house. You can try to put it out with flour or put a lid on it, you know. You could try to use a blanket to smother the flame, but none of those are gonna be the appropriate tool for putting out a fire. If you have a fire in your house and you want the appropriate tool, that's gonna be a fire extinguisher, right? Well, if you have a small fire, a small fire extinguisher will do. And if you have a big fire, you use a big fire extinguisher. Easy enough, right? So people will buy a gun and they'll think they need a gun for self-defense and they'll wanna buy something small, something like this. They don't say, well, I just want a little gun. Um, <clears throat> because to them, a gun is a gun is a gun, is the same. But if I tell you that a fire extinguisher is a fire extinguisher is a fire extinguisher, and you got like a little grease fire versus you know a two-story building on fire, just a fire extinguisher is a fire extinguisher. You just grab a fire extinguisher and put it out. Is it that easy? 
Of course, common sense says a bigger fire extinguisher is gonna be a better fire extinguisher. And so when we talk about guns, this is a small fire extinguisher. And something like this is a big fire extinguisher, right? <clears throat> so when we look at long guns, in other words, rifles and shotguns, they're always gonna be better in every way, every potential measurable metric and compared to handguns. The only time that a long gun, rifle or shotgun, is inferior is if you need to carry it on your person. And that's only the only time when handguns are superior. So handguns, once again, the only thing good about them is that they're small. They fit in your pocket or your belt or your holster and you can carry it with you, you can conceal it. So the number one reason why we would look at a long gun, rifles and shotguns, for self-defense is if you don't plan on carrying it. Namely, if you're looking at the defense uh, of a fixed location where you're gonna leave the gun in that location. This is commonly known as home defense. All right, so now, if we compare <clears throat> rifles to shotguns, what would be the major uh, appeal of one versus the other? Well, there's a couple things here. First of all, um, I, I wanna make a note that I'm primarily addressing California customers when I'm talking about the laws on the purchase and stuff, but everything else, the other concepts apply universally, right? <clears throat> so let me just make that side note. In California, if you buy a rifle, they're significantly tricky. Um, uh, so we're talking semi-automatic rifles, modern centerfire. Uh, you know, this is a rimfire right here. Uh, because it's wearing a UTM conversion. So it is in a, a California compliant configuration, but of course this does not fire live ammunition right now. So if you want a AR-15 or something similar, um, I bought this, oh, you know, uh, 12 years ago now when Obama was getting elected. And uh, I paid, you know, $750 for the bottom half, the lower receiver, this is a Lewis machine and tool. The top half is a CMMG and I paid another $700 for that. So this was $1,500 just for this rifle. On the other hand, <clears throat> if we look at a perfectly functional shotgun, this one I purchased at Big Five for about $289, okay? And um, I cut it with a hacksaw from uh, 28 inches down to uh, 19 inches, and I cut the stock, the length of pull was 14 inches, I cut it with a saw down to 12 and three quarter uh, inches. And I do have a magazine extension for it, but it's not on it right now. So for about 300 bucks and a little bit of time with a hacksaw and some cold blue, uh, this is a legal, um, easy to use, very, very functional, very durable, very reliable, very simple gun. So we're talking $1,500 for a rifle, uh, $300 for a shotgun. Again, you can get an AR-15 or a rifle for less than $1,500. I'm not saying that's the only price. You can get a nice AR-15 for five or $600, but you gotta know what you're looking at. And that's really where we get into it. Shotguns are less complex. They're more primitive devices compared to rifles. Rifles are more complex, more complicated. Um, and in states that have assault weapon restrictions, these things are basically untouched by assault weapon restrictions, okay? So, <clears throat> let's rehash. Um, if you decide to get a gun because it's the appropriate tool for self-defense, um, just like how you get a big fire extinguisher, which is the appropriate tool for putting out a fire, then you may consider getting a long gun rifle or shotgun because you don't plan on carrying it and because long guns are better guns, okay? So now, why would you get a shotgun versus a rifle? They're cheaper, generally speaking. They're easier to use, generally speaking. They're less complex, generally speaking. But more importantly, shotguns are very specific to the distances that you use them. Shotguns really have three distances. The first distance is before your pattern begins to develop, okay? So point blank range on a shotgun, maybe something like four yards, okay? Um, then you have pattern range. Patterning range, which will be, let's say four yards, when you're gonna start developing a pattern which looks like this, the bullets are starting to spread out, the different pellets are starting to spread out, which we'll talk about this greatly in detail in a little bit. And then you're gonna reach a distance where the pattern is so wide that you're no longer effective at hitting your target. So we have to define what our target is and we have to define those distances. To make a long story short, shotguns are really best used within stone throwing distance. If you can take a rock and you can throw it and you can hit somebody, that is the distance we use a shotgun for self-defense. Rifles, on the other hand, like this one, um, rifles are fantastic as a general purpose firearm because you can shoot someone really far, you can shoot someone really close, but you don't have an advantage of multiple projectiles easing your burden to hit your target when you're at medium distance, stone throwing distance. Yeah, you can definitely hit somebody with this at stone's throwing distance with a rifle, but 
at a, with, with a shotgun at the same distance, which is what we're talking about, home defense, self-defense distance, and in, <clears throat> the shotgun will give you some major advantages, namely because of this. We're referring to shot. Okay, this is a pretty pretty affordable, pretty cheap uh, practice buckshot. This is a double lot, 12 gauge, nine pellet. Um, these things run about 60 cents per round. So there are many, many different varieties of buckshot, but when we talk about shotguns, we have to be talking about buckshot, okay? Shotguns can use three different types of ammunition. We'll get into that in a little bit, but the major advantage is that your pellets will spread out increasing your probability of hitting vital targets. When we say vital targets, we're talking about heart, lung, major blood vessels, nervous systems, um, causing bleeding, causing hemorrhage, causing the body to fail, okay? Because if you need to force someone to stop doing what they're doing, which is violent behavior, rape, robbery, murder, mayhem, kidnapping, then at that point, we have asked nicely, we've asked not nicely, and then if they still choose to not stop, we have no choice but to make them stop. And shotguns, the other advantage is that they're very powerful. So ballistically speaking, they're very, very effective. In other words, it is well documented most shotgun gunfights are over with one or two rounds and that's it. That's all you need because they're so effective in the body, right? So we call this study the terminal ballistics, right? The, the study of terminal ballistics, right? Internal ballistics, what the gun's doing inside. External ballistics, how the bullets fly. And terminal ballistics, what the bullets or projectiles do once they hit the target. So why a shotgun? They're very effective, they're very affordable, they're very simple to use, um, and they're ideal for close range self-defense. Need I say more, okay? How do they compare with pistol and rifle? Well, um, this, uh, you know, a handgun, a Glock 17, for example, is about $550. So the cost isn't a whole lot more, a whole lot less. But if we look at this gun, even if it has standard capacity magazines, um, this gun will hold 17 rounds in a magazine of nine millimeter bullets. And you shoot it one at a time, of course. Each of those bullets carries around a 10% mortality rate um, for injuries sustained in this country as long as the emergency medical system is working properly. So in other words, handguns are not that powerful. People will get shot by handguns and continue to fight, continue to be dangerous, and they're very likely to survive that. So when we're talking about uh, just to make a note about this, we're not necessarily looking to kill bad guys, but causing death does correlate with what we're looking for, which is to stop bad guys, stop violent behavior by force, right? By necessary uh, force, if necessary, to use the highest degree of force, the force necessary to kill somebody, deadly force, okay? So handguns as tools of deadly force, they're not that good, right? They're not as good at using deadly force as compared to a long gun, rifles and shotguns. If we look at rifles, you know, depending on how you look at the statistics, it's very hard actually to get a good accurate set of numbers because most rifle wounds are statistics from battlefields and war and then everything is different. Distances are greater, field medicine is not as good, they're wearing body armor, right? So a lot of things change that. If we look at um, rifle wounds in the United States, in the civilian context, there's very few. There's very few crimes committed with rifles. So it's hard to get those kinds of statistics, but we can we can just suppose uh, as, a, as an even round number to build a concept. These things will probably produce wounds of maybe 30% to 40% mortality and shotguns Shotguns with well-placed shots. We're looking and with buckshot We're looking at you know wounds in the 50 60% mortality rate range. Why because shooting someone with a shotgun Let me get some show-and-tell items here Here's a nine millimeter bullet, okay? This is a nine millimeter bullet out of, you know, out of a handgun. Uh, it's been collected out of the dirt, um, so this one has already been fired. So we're talking about the bullet, not the cartridge, the bullet itself. When we look at this, this is a nine millimeter diameter projectile. Each one of those is an eight millimeter diameter projectile, double aught buckshot, two zero, zero zero buckshot. So when, when this encounters a human body, does the body really care between an eight millimeter hole and a nine millimeter hole? the body could care less. The body cares, does my heart have a hole in it? And is my heart bleeding out of the wrong place? Does my lung have a hole in it? Does my lung, is my lung breathing out of the wrong place? Those are the things that really matter to the body. So when we look at pistol wounds, which includes buckshot wounds, they are the same. 22, nine millimeter, 38, 357, 40 caliber, 10 millimeter, 45 caliber, 50 caliber, it's all the same. As far as we're concerned, a hole equals a hole equals bad. And then where the hole is depends on how, determines how bad that wound is. So if you shoot someone with a handgun like, like this, you'd have to shoot someone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, before 
you can equal the effectiveness of shooting someone one time with this, okay? So if these things can carry a 10% mortality rate, imagine what this carries, right? So when we look at self-defense, um, how they compare is much more effective. Handguns, if you don't know, handguns are very difficult to use. So if I was gonna train someone on how to use a handgun properly in self-defense, we would look at about five days of training before that person, I would consider the person reaches a, a basic level of competence, right? A, a fair level of skill and necessary training before they can really use a handgun just fine uh, without being a danger to themselves and society. If we look at a rifle, I can train someone, and again, I'm a professional trainer. I've been training people in this material for seven or eight years now. Um, I've been a professional teacher for going on 13 years now. So just because I can say this doesn't mean you can say this, right? So I can train someone to fight effectively with a rifle in about two days. In two days time, uh, two eight hour days, I can give someone a very, very strong foundation on how to use a rifle. On the other hand, if we look at a shotgun, particularly a, particularly when we're referring to pump action shotguns, whoops, particularly when we're referring to manually operated shotguns, something like this, I can train someone how to be effective with this in four hours, maybe five hours, maybe six hours. I can have a, a family, two or three people, four people, perfectly comfortable, perfectly competent, and able to load, unload, fire, aim, clear malfunctions, everything with this within half a day of time, right? And again, that's from a professional trainer standpoint. I work with a lot of people. If you wanna build a private class, I can work with that. Uh, so I can work with you, but you have, you know, just reach out to me and talk to me and I can set up this type of training. But today's video will give you a lot of the background information that we would be covering anyway. So pay attention, listen up, take notes, all right? So moving on. How do they compare with rifles and pistols? Well, a lot less training compared to a pistol, a lot more effective compared to a pistol. How do they compare to a rifle? Well, rifles and shotguns, you should not compare them. They're, they're not the same thing. They're, they're, um, you know, they're apples and oranges. Rifles are really good at hitting point targets that are stationary. Shotguns are really good at hitting moving targets that are close, okay? That's all it comes down to. Now, rifles produce significant wounds. Shotguns produce significant wounds at the same distances, home defense distances. They're pretty similar. Now, there's a couple advantages to the rifle. One is that these rifles, uh, 223 caliber rifles, which fire ammunition that looks like this, have very low recoil, okay? What is recoil? If I put out energy out the front, every time I fire the gun, every time I fire the gun, energy out the front, energy out the back. So this rifle is gonna be hitting me on the back. So yeah, these rifles recoil less, which means that it's more pleasant to practice with. It really doesn't matter from the fighting standpoint, the recoil, because when we're stressed out, recoil is recoil, we just deal with it. But from a learning standpoint, shotguns are pretty, um, they, they kick a good amount, um, so you need to have the technique and the right skill set so you can absorb properly that recoil without it messing you up. And if we have a rifle, these rifles are so easy to shoot on the recoil side of things, it's a non-issue. But you have to keep in mind, if you fire this thing without earplugs inside your house, rifles are very high pressure, they're really, really, really loud. They're, they're significantly jarring when you fire this without ear protection, even outdoors. Your ears will ring for days, all right? So, um, on that note, when we talk about ease of use, rifles, if you're very petite, rifles like this AR-15 can shrink down, and shotguns, in general, they're gonna be bigger and heavier. Not always, I'm saying in general. But there are more variety of smaller rifles or rifles that can conform to your body type. So that may be a consideration if you're very petite, okay? On the other hand, if you, <clears throat> if you think that you have the necessary strength and, uh, to, to handle this, then you may consider getting a 20 gauge shotgun, which is significantly smaller and lighter. We're gonna come back to this more often uh, later on down the presentation. But this allows you to get a smaller shotgun. It still works just the same as we need it to, but it solves the problem of being heavy. Mind you, a small shotgun is still gonna kick a pretty good amount. So it's not bad, it's not, too, it's not a whole lot, but it is something to consider if you're particularly small or particularly recoil shy, all right? Moving on, capabilities, how they work. Shotguns are unique because they're smooth bore. The barrel has nothing in it, it's just a pipe, okay? And they're more primitive devices. So these shotguns, uh, they date from the beginning of firearms. They might be something like, um, might be something like 700 years old technology. They're not gonna be as fancy as a rifle as far as the technology goes inside them in the manufacturing of them. 
But they solve the problem of being, you know, low performance in a sense. They're not precision tools. They solve the problem by putting up multiple projectiles. Now, if you look at this, this is a type of ammunition called birdshot. Birdshot, also known as target load, we're gonna put out a whole bunch of little tiny, tiny BBs. And usually they're made out of lead or they're made out of steel or they're made out of tungsten and bismuth and tin and other things for shooting birds and rabbits. Now we don't use birdshot for self-defense. Let's just be clear about that. We don't use birdshot for self-defense. Birdshot is for birds, buckshot is for bad guys. There is another type of ammunition which is called a slug. This is a gigantic um, bullet, but it's actually hollow on the inside. So it kind of looks like a, like a coffee mug, right? So this would be like, if you look at the coffee mug from the bottom, that's the bottom. And then the, the inside of the slug is, is a hollow cup. So these things actually have very low sexual de sectional density. They produce tremendous wounds, but there's only one of them. And again, shotguns don't have rifling. So they don't spin stabilize the bullet, which means that they're not super accurate. So combined with the low ammunition capacity on a shotgun and uh, <clears throat> the heavy recoil on a shotgun, the difficulty aiming at the primitive sights on a shotgun, I don't think it's worth it to fire slugs in self-defense, okay? So take that in your notes as a recommendation. Brian Wang, I do not recommend that you use slugs in your self-defense shotgun. You're confounding the issue. You're making it uh, more difficult for yourself. Keep it simple. Shotguns loaded with buckshot, dedicated tool, dedicated task. People think that they're multi-purpose tools. They're not. Once you set it up like this, this is a youth size hunting gun. Nope, not anymore. It was. Once I set it up with this extended barrel, once I set it up, um, with uh, you know the shell carriers, for example, like this, that holds ammunition and uh, <clears throat> sling and stuff like that. This is a fighting gun, and this is not a gun that you would take out hunting with your you know ten year old daughter anymore. Um, really, this is made for a petite person to be able to use. You know, someone my size, I'm five seven and smaller. You know, I wear a small size shirt. Um, so you know, if you were a relatively small person, you know, let's say five six and smaller you're gonna really benefit from having a shorter gun, lighter gun, skinnier gun, and skinnier ammunition. We'll talk about this in a bit, all right? So capabilities. Yeah, they spread out. Um, yeah, we choose them with buckshot. We don't use birdshot for self-defense. We don't use slugs for self-defense. Um, how they work, this one's manually operated, so you have to cycle the round, press the trigger, cycle the round, press the trigger, cycle the round, press the trigger. That makes it very sim simple to use, very simple to learn, very primitive, but also fairly slow on the rate of fire. How slow? Well, not as slow as you think. I'll give you an example. A typical well-trained person with a semi-automatic handgun, such as a Glock 17, can fire about four to five rounds per second, okay? Four to five rounds per second. A typical well-trained person with this can fire three rounds per second. In fact, I have kind of a record um, for racing this gun on the clock. Uh, this was at Masada Youth Group Mag 80 in Washington, uh, oh, I don't know, in 2015 or 2014 or 2017. I, I don't remember how, what year it was. Anyways, <clears throat> so we timed everybody to see how fast they were, but you can run these things significantly faster. So let's look at the ammunition real quick, because I'm going to keep on harping on the idea of ammunition as being integral to your plan of using a shotgun for self-defense. Here is a Federal Premium Buckshot. This is 20 gauge. And this 20 gauge shell is a number four buck. You can see the different um, charts. Again, you can look this up on your own time, but you can see there's different rate charts. So the biggest is a triple odd buck, a double odd buck, an odd buck, you know, a one, a two, whatever. Um, so the smallest one here is a number four buck, which is 24 caliber, roughly a quarter inch in diameter. This shell here holds 24 of those bullets, okay? So let's say with this gun, I can shoot five rounds per second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two seconds, I can fire 10 rounds, okay? With this guy here, I can fire it one time, 24 rounds, 48 rounds. I lost count because I'm not very good at math. Asian's bad at math, all right? So, but you get the idea. This gun holds eight shells, eight of these, and each one of these holds 24 bullets. How many bullets do you need to put out before your bad guy says, I'm done fighting? I'll let you think about that, all right? So if we look at, if we look at shotguns um, and their capabilities, they work very primitively, they're very simple, they have a canister, they launch a whole bunch of bullets, they're terminally very effective because they poke a whole bunch of holes in the body. And again, we're looking for, ideally, damaging the uh, spinal column or the heart or the major aortas and blood vessels or damaging surface central nervous system. But if we can't damage that, we'll damage everything and just spread out the damage until the body fails through loss of blood pressure, loss of lung function, etc. Okay, so let's take a, a closer look at some of these guns and how they work. 
First of all, you have the barrel. This one's uh, 19 inches long. This one has a vent rib, which I'm a traditionalist. I prefer just keeping your gun simple. Bead sights only on a shotgun. That's what I prefer because shotguns for close, fast moving targets in the dark, right? We don't need to have red dots. We don't need to have lasers. We don't need to have rifle sights. You don't need to have any of that shit. I do recommend you set up an extended magazine. This is an aftermarket component. Magazine extension for your gun. Normally the gun ends here on the magazine. It only holds four plus one. Now this adds three rounds to the gun. So I have seven plus one rounds.